filming a little day in life video to show you what I get up to during the day workout is done now it's about 7 30 and I'm going to make myself coffee but I thought I would show you the kind of coffee I make because it is kind of a little bit different Okay, now that I have my coffee, I'm going to do about an hour and a half of laptop work and then I have a little appointment that I have to drive for, so let's get cracking. Okay, so just about to head to my appointment. I'm getting this thing called cryotherapy, which is where in they make you sit in like really cold environment. I've never done it before, but I'm excited to check it out. Just finished. I went in for two minutes and it was literally the longest two minutes of my life. Freezing. <laughs> All right, just finished my appointment. Let me tell you a little bit more about what I did. So cryotherapy, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's supposed to help you with your skin. It's supposed to help you feel energized. It has a lot of like good benefits. You could read about it. And I wanted to try it out because I've been hearing so much about cold plunges, which I know it's slightly different, but it has like similar benefits. But I just didn't want to like get wet and have to, you know, do the whole thing. I wanted something that was in and out. And this is literally the quickest appointment. Go in, you get undressed, you put that robe on, the hat, the gloves, the slippers, and then you run in two minutes, listen to one song, and you're done. Now I'm going to head to get some lunch. You see, I skip breakfast. I'm not a big breakfast person. If I have breakfast, I'll just have like a little oh, like oatmeal or something and just coffee. But I do get pretty hungry by lunch because I work out in the morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop two sweet greens, I think. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and drive to the warehouse. <laughs> secured the goods and now I am on my way to the warehouse hello Hi. just walking to get a coffee with Jessica yeah. and Jessica is judging me for not ever going to the state fair <laughs> we've never been to the state fair it's amazing nope never That's not a true Texan you need to go how long have you been living here now four years I think four years yep and never ever had a chance What's your favorite thing about the Seifa? The food. It's the one thing I have the, to get. The corny dog. Ooh. That's or their good. fresh lemonade. Fresh lemonade, everyone. Hi. Oh yeah. This would be a great fulfillment table. So cool. Jessica and I just assessing everything and trying. Things we want in the warehouse. This is a cute little coffee shop. Oh yeah, this would be ideal. <laughs> Ours will get to that point. They'll grow. Hopefully we can keep them alive until that point. <laughs> Voila! Go this is a chai latte with hot chocolate. Like a chai latte mocha. Mm -hmm. Normally I wouldn't go for anything like this, but it's delicious. Alright, so Jessica has her coffee. Yay. I got mine in there and we are ready to get to work. Go! All right, so a lot of you guys have asked about the process of designing collections for Jubilee. What inspires me? How do I even get started? It's different for every single collection, but I wanted to give you a couple of different examples. I will look at different fabrics, like if my manufacturer has a new, exciting, sustainable fabric that they're sourcing, and 
and they show it to me I then kind of get inspired by the texture of it see what kind of set would make sense with this kind of fabric like for example for the fleecy sets obviously it's cozy so you want something that feels plushy and oversized but with the waffle fabric it's a little bit more elevated luxurious elegant it almost feels like a robe so in that case I decided to go with flared uh, wide leg pants because I thought that it would give it more of that elegant feel now for the 90s collection what inspired it wasn't the fabric itself but the feeling of nostalgia and the colors that you will find on windbreakers I don't know if you guys can remember the classic iconic windbreakers that everybody was wearing in the 90s a lot of people in the UK where I grew up actually wear them to festivals even nowadays so that's where I really would always see it just always felt like whenever I saw a windbreaker like that at a festival it just gave me that nostalgic feel and I wanted to bring that into Jubilee but I wanted to do it in a different way obviously I didn't want to design just another windbreaker I wanted it to still be a plushy um, pullover so that was like the initial thought process so let me take you guys and show you some of my color palettes I looked at a bunch of different color palettes and started kind of peeling different colors from the booklet and putting them against each other just to see which one would look best and for the other a 90s pullover which I'm not wearing right now I thought that these colors really went together off burgundy and the navy and the cream this one I would say is definitely a little bit more toned down I always like to give people two options one that is a little bit more bright and colorful and then a little bit more of a neutral option for people that prefer to wear more neutral colors so this is still very colorful but it is definitely a lot more toned down than the turquoise and lilac I saw this one picture of Diana Spencer from the 90s in particular which actually inspired the seafoam color in one of the pullovers I know that this isn't a windbreaker but it kind of gives me the same feel so skiing in the 90s and windbreakers the 90s nostalgia and then the last step is really just sketching out a couple of different um, pullover ideas and seeing what works best for this one I knew I wanted little buttons I knew I wanted a collar that can stand up but also be folded down I knew I wanted a pocket detail so I decided to just add the flap and get rid of the pocket because it wasn't something that I was using but it was creating like a pouch effect here which was unflattering I was going through a huge debate on whether or not to keep this but when I removed the flap completely it just wasn't giving me enough of a pop of a color so I decided to keep the little flap on I go through multiple sketches before I come out with a design that makes sense for me and that's really like the final step now a lot of changes take place once I get the first sample to my manufacturer I'll tell them my vision I'll send them my sketches and then they tell me what's possible and what's not what doesn't make sense um, I can't sew myself so I rely on a lot of their advices in terms of like what makes sense realistically they always provide me with the feedback for that I'm really fortunate to have really really great manufacturers sometimes I will go through five six samples for one collection before I am happy with the final result so it does take a long time to get the perfect product I'm gonna go ahead and start um, designing some new collections for summer I know we haven't hit spring but I always have to be you know a couple steps in advance because it does take a few months to really perfect the design and sample it sample it sample it again before I'm happy with the results so I have to always um, do it a couple months in advance so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for this one it's gonna be like an introduction to summer so I think short sleeves make the most sense for this collection I'm kind of inspired by those vintage Ralph Lauren kind of styled polo shirts where like you can steal it from your boyfriend and it's kind of like draping over your shoulders so um, your shoulders will probably stop like right here this will kind of just give that extra length to the sleeve so the sleeve won't actually be that short it will probably hit somewhere at the elbow since it's kind of oversized here I'm thinking of different ideas to still have like that sexy element to it and I think I might add like a little band here like a little stretchy band 
um, so that when you pull it, you can kind of crunch it together and then give yourself a waistline. Or if you want more of that oversized feel that day, you can release it. But I like having an option of two, so I think I'm gonna do that for this set. But this is kind of just like the basic sketch. Once I have the first sample, I will also add on it and kind of give my manufacturers like little notes on each section on what to change and whatnot. But yeah, this is kind of, not to bore you guys too much, but this is kind of like the baseline of things. All right, so it is about 3 p.m. now. I am done sketching and designing some of the collections. Jessica is just finishing up as well. I am gonna head home because I need to shoot these in one of the rooms in my apartment. I always do these photos of collections against the white wall on the rack as a little sneak peek. So I gotta do that because we are launching on Monday and it is already Tuesday. Um, so I need to post it on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, just so I have enough time to then show all the other sneak peeks of this collection. So I think I'm gonna start packing and head out now. Home sweet home. All right, so now I'm just gonna quickly move this big rack into our office bedroom. Right about here, and as you can see, this room has a lot of light, so this is perfect all right so by the time i'm done fluffing them out and putting them on these rats this is what it looks like i'm gonna try to crank out these photos as soon as possible because it's so nice outside it is so sunny and i want to go out and get some sun finished getting some sun showered and got ready and now i think we're gonna go to a little coffee shop to do a little bit more work it's around 5 30 and then after we're done doing work for an hour or two we're gonna go straight to dinner so see you then <laughs> finally we're rallying um we ended up not going to a coffee shop we work from home so now we're gonna just go straight to dinner because it's 6 40. Do you need fruit rolls? Do you need fruit rolls? I ran out. Immediately. Yeah.